Thank you for watching Everything Sparkle. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming Thanks on. For and let's me. you're at work. Where are you working at? Uh, right now. Is it a job we could talk about on TV? And like no, 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 no. It's a top secret job. So I yeah, I can't uh disclose that. But <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a day backdrop. job. I love the yellow backdrop. Oh, cool, 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 yeah. Thank okay, you. so Thank tell you. us what you have going on. You have quite a story, and you've articulated oh, it. Tell us about your story and how what you're doing with that. Well, um, I like to refer to myself uh, as the, the little kid who could, you know, I, um, reference to the little engine that could. Uh, just growing up, with you know a bad hand dealt to me I, I decided to make the best out of my life and um regardless the circumstances you know i made a promise to myself and my late brother to to be the best i could be so you know out of all the hardship i had in life i, I just kept pushing and that uh made me write this book you know and resilient is something that um the world has referred to me as not not myself. So, you know, just going through life, I just had to push through it. Okay, and so tell us about is, the book and like what? Yeah, this I'm book. Sure. This book here, you know, it's uh forty three chapters and um four hundred and sixty pages. Wow. Yeah, and you know, there are still probably like ten chapters that didn't make it because it. I decided to cut it back and stick to the uh, the original narrative, you know, which is dealing with uh, drug addicted parents and how, you know, addiction that was not mine affected my life greatly. Tell us a little bit about that. So um, how many siblings were there? Well, my mom, yeah, to give you a little backstory, my mom herself, she was the youngest of 14 children. Okay, where at? What and, town? Uh, what was that? What town? Oh, she she was uh, raised in Fresno, California, but she was born in Phoenix, Arizona. So the youngest of uh, fourteen children, and um, her mother was on dialysis her young life. So she she grew up knowing that she would lose her mom soon. So she started using drugs and alcohol at twelve years old. So I didn't find that out until she passed away. And when she passed away, she left a uh, voice recording on her phone, just telling her testimony. And that empowered me to to write my book because my book is the blanks and it is from my vantage point. So, yeah, just her life was very, very hard. And to and raise what, children. I can't believe how many how many children did she have? She came from four. She had three. She, she had, had three. three. So her oldest. Her oldest, which is my brother who passed away, then me, and I have a younger sister, two years older than me. I mean, two how years did, younger than me. How did your brother pass away? He passed away in a car accident. And how old was yeah, he? So he was 18. And you were how old? 16. And I had to identify him on the scene of the accident by myself as well. So I write about that. Were you there? I was not there, but in the aftermath, I was picked up by, by a relative and they took me out there and I had to identify him. So I didn't have the guts to look underneath the sheet that they had over the car in the wreckage. So I talk about that as well, what that was like. So what did you identify him by? Well, um, as I, as I let the fear, you know, um, cripple me, you know, I, I went back and I end up finding my mom and we went out there to the scene of the accident. And by this time, two hours later, they had him pulled out of the car. So, you know, I could see him laying on the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was to date my toughest, toughest, uh, obstacle. How can you say how old you are now? You don't have to if you don't want to. But you were. Oh, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I'm proud to be here at at 40 years old. I 
have not a shame in the world. You're so young looking. I knew you. It, were yeah. <laughs> thank, um, you. Th thank you. Thank you. You know you are. You're like, yeah. How uh, old were you when you wrote this book? And what like made you even decide to write it? Because I know it's a great story, but I know it's very daunting to write if you've never really written before. Um, so when did you decide that you were going to write this book? Um, I started, I want to say, we'll say three years ago. But the actual writing has been done for over a year already. So it took me maybe two years to write it. But it was it was so difficult for me because to relive these moments, um, I had to take multiple mental breaks. And when I would take those mental breaks, my, my best friend, he would push me and say, hey, man, I'm, I'm waiting to buy that book. You know, I can't buy it unless you finish it. So, you know, I would dive back in it. But yeah, about two years worth of writing. Do you think it was therapeutic for you? It was, it was. And I didn't know that until after I was done, I, I um, went to therapy and my therapist said, essentially, that's what therapy is, putting your thoughts, your feelings into words. Wow, that's so crazy. Like you went yeah. afterwards. Did you ever think about afterwards. what made you decide to finally go to therapy and like why you didn't do it before the book? Well, before, because, you know, in the in the in the black community, uh, it's like taboo. Like as soon as you say therapy, they they, they associate that with being crazy or something. And, a, and a for men, mine, too. Right. It's the black community, but also men have like a yeah. you can't really get it as well. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I can't speak for all men, but I just know for me and, and you know, the guys I grew up around, my none of us have gone to therapy. So now I'm a, I'm an advocate for that. But I do know that men in general really don't speak of their feelings. You know, it's considered soft at, at times. But me, I'm just I'm an open book now and I've suppressed so much my whole life that I, I have to get it all out. So I can, you know, really thrive in life. Yeah, I don't wow. I don't feel like I have to hide from anything anymore. Especially a painful to. past. Oh yeah, it was second nature. You know, we the way we were raised, we didn't talk about our, our troubles outside of the home because that was considered taboo. Yeah. So um your parents, they're the same two parents for all three children? No, no, no. My Different. brother and I, we had the same mother and father. My um, sister, she had her own father. So yeah. at what point, tell us a little bit about the early work. And you don't have to give any spoilers away for your book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us yeah, a I'm little bit. I'm not going to spoil it. But. When I, the more you talk about it, the more I want to read it. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Read that right away. Um, tell us a little bit about this, the struggles that you had in those early years. Well, uh, just the, the the fact that I had to figure out what drug use was, you know, in itself was a struggle because in the neighborhood I grew up in, the uh, kids around, when their parents got wind of, of my mom's activities and the type of company she would have around her house, they wouldn't allow their kids to come to our house anymore. So it affected me as far as how I can play with my friends in the neighborhood and, and things like that. So just being able to play with your friend one day and, and then not have an explanation of why he can't come out and hang with you anymore. You know, that's pretty uh, damaging to a, to a kid. Then you have to stay in, in the house and pay more attention to what your mom's doing when she's out of her element, you know, what kind of neighborhood were you in? So were you in a better neighborhood where everything was like bad? Or... Uh, well, in the uh, in the or early in or mid 80s, rather, in the mid 80s, rather, it was a middle class neighborhood. You know, everyone uh, worked and, and, you know, it was pretty, pretty um, community driven. Everyone was like family, you know, but we're talking about the uh, the crack epidemic, you know. So when that came out, it really tore up my family, you know, and a lot of uh, families around the nation, you know, they, their parents indulged in that drug. So, you know, this book is from the perspective of a child, 
we see documentaries about the adults and how it affected them, but we don't see from the child's point of view, you know, how their quality of life has changed. So this gives you a, a, a um, firsthand look what it's like inside a home with a, with a parent on crack. So when you were a child in this middle house, middle class neighborhood in Fresno, mm -hmm. California, um, mm -hmm. and then the crack came, I mean, at what point did you even know? Was it because your friends stopped hanging out with you that you something wasn't right and you figure out oh, you always yeah. knew, hey, all of a sudden my mom's not acting right. Um, yeah, that that as well. And, you know, um, just the way that the drive to use this drug and keep using it, it just really turns your whole life upside down, you know, for the user, because you, you are no longer responsible. You know, bills are not your first priority. Now you have to move from your residence and you, you're trying to kick this habit or not. And, you know, it's just getting the best of you. So you go from being homeless to living with different relatives, you know, to potentially getting your kids placed in foster homes, you know, just the whole spiral out of control factor, you know, and if you haven't lived it or, or, you know, had a relative or something live that lifestyle, then it's kind of hard to fathom what it's like firsthand. So, I mean, I, I believe every family has a, a crackhead cousin or a drug addict cousin, you know, that they uh, are not as close to. So if you can imagine, you know, the children in that, in that setting, you know, to give you a better understanding, you know, on the outside looking in. Um, did your mom ever get her life together? Cause you mentioned kind of about her talking before she passed yeah. away. She mentioned yeah. that. So, so tell us about that part. Well, without spoiling it, you know, without spoiling it. Yes. Yeah. Without spoiling it. Um, but anyway, the, just the de the intricate details is what's the most important thing anyway. So I can tell you that her journey, you know, her struggle spanned 30 plus years, but she was finally able to get clean. And yeah, just to, to find out the ups and downs by reading this book, you know, you yourself as the reader wouldn't believe that she could actually find sobriety, you know? Was so, she very yeah, remorseful yeah. when that happened? Was she very apologetic to you and your siblings? Well, see, that's, that's the thing, you know, as, as an, as an addict, you know, it's not about, and I, I can't speak for an addict, but from what I've uh, experienced with my mom, just, it was more important for her to, to get her own mental health together than it was to, pacified me she couldn't change the past you know and i had to be okay with that and i i just found happiness in seeing her doing the best she could because as an adult i just had to move on with my life you know because a person will drag you through the mud as long as you hold on if they're not ready to change their life so i had to let go so did you ever have any struggles with alcohol or drug use i did not I did not. And that's that's what makes me, you know, the miracle, because to be a product of that environment and to not indulge in that, to not do drugs to not join a gang, to not, you know, uh, commit to a life of violence. You know, when that's all I saw growing up, you know, that's what sets me apart from a lot of people. Did you stay away from it on purpose or do you like have some drinks on the weekend, smoke a little pot sometimes, or do you just stay away from everything the whole time? I stayed away from everything. Now, now I, um, I'll have a drink occasionally, you know, because I'm a, an adult, but I understand that addiction has ran in my family, you know, so I've seen what it can do to you. So I would be a fool to think that I am exempt. So I choose what I do and I control my own thoughts. And I never wanted to do a drug because I saw firsthand what drugs do to people and how it tears up families, you know? That seems logical and a lot of people would say that, but as you know, yeah. a lot of times you want to escape 
your reality <laughs> that was so bad by doing something like that. So what did you do growing up to not have an outlet to ever let your mind escape because you were being sober? What was your See, outlet? That's the thing. You know, we all, some people think they need a substance to cope, but I, I like to think I have uncanny coping skills. You know, it, it's kind of like the glass half empty, half full, you know, but I, I, that's what makes me who I am, you know, like I couldn't drink away the pain because once I sober up, it'll still be there, you know, and just knowing that as a, as a kid and just saying no, you know, that's me, that's who I am, you know, but as an adult, like when my mom passed away, I, um, I can honestly say in those past five years since she's been gone I've drank more than the past 20 years in that five year span but if I notice you know that I'm indulging too much I'll cut everything out only because I'm very aware of you know addiction I don't ever want to be controlled by anything how um were your siblings like, and how was your brother like before he passed away at eighteen? Were they did they have a similar mindset or not so much with the whole addiction? Oh, he, I I believe he sacrificed himself for me, you know, because um we were like roommates our whole lives, and when he um turned about seventeen, he moved out and started living his own life, and he had to do different things to make ends meet, and I I witnessed him, you know even sell drugs to his own mom, just to, you know, assure that we can have a roof over our heads. And that was a different sacrifice for, for him being so young and, and having to shoulder that big of a responsibility, you know? And naturally I, I attempted to follow his footsteps, but, you know, he had a, a real heart to heart conversation with me and he told me we both don't need to to go this route. So, you know, use, use your talents, use your gifts, man, be something like make mom proud. And that was the best advice I've ever gotten in my life. And that came from my brother. So when he passed away, that's all I had was the, the promise, you know, to, to make mom proud and just to carry that, you know, into my, my future since we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it together on earth, my brother and I. So you say, how can I maintain and stay focused? You know, I, I, had, I had him with me, you know, the whole way. Cause when he, when he left this earth, he really didn't leave my heart. So that's a little deeper than, uh, oh, that's good. yeah, but it makes sense. And, you know, I was an athlete before he passed, you know, and he would, pushed me to do that and he was into music so when he passed away I, I figured out that I can keep him alive by pursuing his dreams so then I uh, ventured into music and started a career in music and it kept me feeling close to my brother are you a religious person or a spiritual person um, I, I've always had a relationship with God you know and it was the faith I have that kept me moving through life because there was times when there were not a person around, but I was not alone, if that makes sense. If that's not God, I don't know who was there. You know, I leave that up to people and what they believe to tell me if they say God's not real. But there was times I couldn't carry myself. Somebody carried me. And that's God. Yeah, it what, wasn't my mom. It wasn't my dad. And your brother isn't, I mean, it's your brother's with you, but not, you felt something more that was telling you, keep pushing, keep yeah. pushing. Yes, yes. Voices, you know, speaking to me, letting me know, like, you're, you're doing the right thing or, you know, don't go that way. Don't go to that party, you know, and I don't go and somebody gets shot and dies. You know what I mean? Yeah, stuff like that. So I've learned at an early age to listen to the voice. And that's been like my spirit guide.
So tell us about your um, your father and your sister. We haven't talked a lot about them. What had happened with your dad during all of this? Well, my dad, he um, uh, he had a choice to either be there or not be there. And he chose to not be there. So, you know. Um, was he on drugs too? He was on drugs. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And um, for that, you know, I can give him grace. But uh, being a father myself, I just could not, I couldn't fathom anything taking you fully out of your, your child's life, especially when you're striving to do great things and, you know, somebody you can be proud of. You know, so he uh, he missed out on that, you know. And everything I didn't get from him, I'm able to give to my son. And the greatest joy in the world is seeing my son um, love me and just want to make me proud. That's that's amazing right there. How so I hold no grudges. Um, my son, he'll be nine in October and. The things we do together and the confidence I have in him. Just last summer, or actually two summers ago, my son and I, we uh, pulled out a motor out of my classic Mustang and we put a new one in. Me and my, my little eight-year-old son. Like, that's, that's crazy. So when people, when I tell people and then I show them the pictures and videos, they're like, oh, oh, okay. He's actually using the, the uh, engine hoist to, to lift the motor up. <laughs> You know, and safety first, you know, I've coached him up on how to do, you know, everything. But, yeah, that's my partner, my sidekick right there. Yeah, but my daughter, she's the, the camera person, you know, <laughs> to document these, these things. Yeah, but just all I didn't have growing up, you know, I made sure my kids would have. And, how old you know, daughter? The, my daughter, she'll be 14 in July. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just blessed, you know, just blessed. And you wouldn't think, like, again, getting into the book, you, it's tough to imagine the outcome, you know. Even if I told you the outcome, reading it for yourself, you'll, even if you know the ending, you'll still, you'll still doubt because that narrative is, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, for others. I had no choice. I said, I'm going to make it at all costs. And that's what I did. So what happened to your sister? My sister, she, she's living good. She's living her life. You know, she, um, that's my sister. I love her. You know, she um, has her family and we're, uh, we're close. You know, we grew up in the same house, you know, and she's a good kid. So uh, she's she's, she kid. made it kind of? She didn't get into yeah, the Yeah, she, she made it. She's, uh, you know, she's alive. She's never been to prison. <laughs> you know, she has a roof over her head. You know, her children are well taken care of, you know. So it's safe to say, you know, mom didn't produce drug addict kids, you know. So that's that's good. You know, do you ever talk to your father anymore? Uh, my father is currently incarcerated right now, you know, but um, when he gets out soon, you know, I'll, I'll definitely uh, reach out to him, you know, and um, have a heart to heart with him as well. You know, I think I need to uh, forgive him for for whatever it is, you know, just forgive him so I can move forward with my life and not hold a grudge. You know, what was it before all this? Because it sounds like they were middle class or kind of had it together, your parents, and you guys were in a good neighborhood. Well, see, uh, my parents were never together, like to my to my understanding, you know, um, they were not married. So my brother is two years older than me and then came myself. And then two years later, my sister came with her dad and my mom and her dad were married so you know that chapter with my dad to my knowledge you know was short-lived and he was never was born. yeah they were never married like my dad and i and my mom we never lived in the same house to my knowledge okay 
-hmm. So was your stepdad like a decent provider at the time? Like when did the drugs um, come in, in the to, to the picture? Well, I I will let you read that. I don't want to spoil that, but the, oh, those, give me something. Those, I'll put it like this: He couldn't keep his hands to himself. Yeah, he was a abusive person. You know, his um his good times were good, but you know, the bad outweighed the good all the time. So that um just as a young male, you don't want to see your mom getting hurt by someone who's supposed to love her. You know, that that creates just I don't even know what to call it, but I knew that was wrong, you know. But it would happen so often that, you know, as kids don't know anything, they're taught everything. I, I would think that was normal behavior, you know, but I knew it wasn't. And not being able to speak on with what went on inside your home, you had to keep it in or else, you know, you'd have the authorities at your house, you know, making changes in your house or taking people away, you know. So There's a chapter in the book called Dysfunctional Harmony, and I think that speaks for itself, you know? And I think a lot of families can relate to that, not to your mm -hmm. level, but they have that. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. So, you know, putting that real rawness in there, you know, I don't know what the other struggles are in America, but I'm sure someone can relate to something, you know? This book is it self published or do you have did you have a publishing house? Um, I self published and I have a publishing house at the same okay. time. So, yeah, How I just went. Work? Huh? How does that work? Well, I, I just not waiting on anybody. You, you started know? the self publishing process and then you yeah. were a publisher later. Okay. Yeah, I put it out myself. You know, okay. and, um, when when you um, connect with a publishing house, they will re rebranded you know and you'll have a new isbn and the whole okay. nine but a new copyright so it's just another version of the same book and this time they'll take claim to some royalties or something like that you know so that's just to get it further to get the reach further right i actually had a um a interview today with uh tbn to get it yeah. out on the uh the Christian network, you know, so I'm undecided on what what I want to do on on that uh, aspect. But this will definitely make a movie, you know, and uh, just keeping my options open right now. I just want to get this story out there because, again, this is a voice for the voiceless and, you know, hope for the hopeless. Like if I could make it, I feel anyone can. Definitely. I can't yeah. wait to read this. If it was to be a Christian book, though, you'd have to take a lot of stuff out of it. No, I'm not taking anything out. OK, you well, I didn't to, know. You need to feel the real truth. Like we we can't. I was wondering everything. if that came up in, in a conversation because I had a friend that like yeah. wrote a book and that write two different versions of it just because it was too yeah. graphic. We need the graphic. Life is graphic. I, you know, I agree. I was just wondering how that yeah. was working out with them. With the com I was wondering how the conversation went. Oh, it went great. It went great. And I'm not even open. I'm not open to changing it. You need to hear the dialogue. You need to hear how people spoke when they were under the right. influence. Because, again, if you give a watered down version, how is it going to help people dealing with real serious issues? You know, you have to say it mean, you know. You, you, you have to be as, as violent as they were, or you won't really, you know, feel the effects of it. That's Are you opinion. married today? Today I am divorced and I have a special lady that we should be planning a, a wedding pretty soon. Oh, yeah. that's so, good to hear. Yeah, so even, even on, that, uh, on that tip, I have a whole book to write about being married how tough it is and how easy it is at the same time, and, you know, and how divorce works and how uh, finding love again, you know, is so wonderful, especially when you come in with a, 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 a renewed sense of uh, just what the whole thing is about.
So yeah, that'll be my next book. You heard it first. I think I I'll call it Second Chances, you know? Because there's some people who've never been married at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but I'm very curious to read that book. Definitely. I definitely need yeah. to read it. both of them, all of them. The one that's out, the one that's coming out. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much for coming on my show. I can't wait to read this. So right now, when we want to buy this right now, where do I go to? Uh, you can buy it on Amazon. Oh, perfect. Right now. Yeah, you can read it for free on the Kindle. and um, Or you can wait till I have this massive shipment that'll be here in two weeks and you can get it for me delivered and signed we could just dm you okay because your um, your instagram is different than your name you're one of those my, my instagram is at j l o w e music yeah and my website where you can order the book and everything is www.jlowemusic.com and my other one is www.resilientjamarlinlow.com. And everything will take you to the same place where all the information is. Okay. Because then it's not yeah, even also, on your Instagram. You need to put that I also in have a, a soundtrack for my book as well. Oh, is that where the music's coming into? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my first passion, music. Yeah, so the soundtrack will, will just highlight different stories in this book and once you read it you'll you'll feel you'll feel this music more you know i love that so where can we have that where can we find that one? uh it'll it'll be on my website as well that's all know? in the same spot okay yeah, yeah it's all in the same spot now what's the book one more time here you go and it's called resilient resilience it's just one word that's all it needs to be that's yeah. It sums it up, right? Yeah, it sums it up. Sums it up. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming on my show. Hey, thank you as well. Thank you as well. Such a mess here. Oh, we are distressed here. Used to be so easy with you. Now I must confess here.